All right, hey everybody, welcome back to the eBay shop. My name's Corey. I'm Teresa. And we are Grams and Pops Vintage. And today we're gonna talk about, well, we're gonna talk about some eBay basics. Some some things that are good for new eBay sellers to know. Some yep. some troubles, trouble spots. What mm -hmm. am I trying to say here? Some sticky spots that people that are getting to eat. Let's start over. <laughs> so, so some areas where people <laughs> always have questions when they start on eBay. Yes, we, we know a few people that are brand new to eBay. They're just getting into it. And these are some common areas where they're running into questions. Yes. So we figured while well, we did answer them immediately, we figured we would also make a video to help maybe some of you guys out too. Maybe somebody new to eBay that's just finding our channel. So that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. We are. Right? Okay. Yes. Wow, that was a lot to get that out. Man, you just don't word today. That was tough. Okay. But as usual, we do have some things going out the door today. We have a lot of orders to get packed up, but we're going to share about 10 of them with you guys. And what's the first one of those? Football cards. 1988 Tops football cards in the small box. Just talking about these here. Mm -hmm. So we got an entire box of 1988 NFL football cards from Tops, And these sell for, well, what did this one sell for? Did we take an offer? Full price. Full price. $150 plus shipping. Mm-hmm. That was a good one. We actually sold a couple boxes of football cards this weekend. Yep. All right. What else we got? Tupperware. We sold some Tupperware orange snack containers with seals. There you go. So it's these little guys here. We've got them saran wrapped together. I'll leave them that way. But there's three of them, looks like. Can I tell you something? Seals? You mean lids? No, they don't call them lids at Tupperware. They call them seals. Tupperware, those are lids. No, they're seals. No, go seals. Go look at their old dated. I pulled up some of their older, like, product magazines you know like avon whatever you get the product magazines i pulled up some older ones and they list them as seals oh i'm sorry so that's what i list them as They're seals. a seal is a aquatic mammal it's not a you don't put a seal on top of where you put so lids. they get they get the three lid the three bowls with three lids with three additional lids oh they get extra lids yes nice okay so what did that sell for nine bucks plus shipping nine bucks so some little kid's gonna get their goldfish crackers and they got an extra lid just in case should have saved those for the grandbabies. All right, so before we get into the whole helpful stuff. Yeah. Yeah, before we jump into the helpful stuff, we did want to stop for a second and actually say thank you to you guys. Yep. That's something I don't think we do enough on this channel is actually say thank you and try to give back. We try to give as much information as we can, but it it's very easy in the day-to-day -day to get busy and not say thank you enough. So we did want to do that. We actually do want to say thank you to all of our viewers and especially the people who have joined our Patreon. If we do have a small community that is growing, we have a Patreon and a Discord, and we wanted to say thank you to some of our members on there. Well, to all of our members on there. Yes. You want me to read? Tell them thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Jenna Naylor. Thank you, Brandy and Daniel Hodges, and Susie Frost, and Marsha over at Daisy Picks and Thrifts, and Len at 5280 Finds. Yep. And one of our first Patreons was Rachel Aurora Mac. We've actually met Rachel. We met Rachel at the reseller rally in Cincinnati. So yep, we did. She brought me Bucky's. Is yep. that what it's called? She did. Yeah. Bucky's. I love them. The Bucky's Nuggets or whatever. The they Bucky's were. Nuggets. And yeah. I buy them locally. They're not Bucky's Nuggets. Locally. We didn't know what they were. No. <laughs> we had to try. Yeah. So I buy them locally just under different brands. All it is is caramel puff corn. Yep. So. Another thing we wanted to say thank you for is we have had several viewer sales, not so much today, but in in the past few months, we've seen more and more. We're getting a viewer sale here and there, which mm -hmm. we never did before, which is amazing. Thank you guys for doing that. You don't have to do that. No. And if you are going to do that, we wanted to provide a discount code for you guys. If you're watching the channel, and you're going to buy something, use the discount code, at least save a little bit on it. So mm -hmm. we did make a coupon code just for you. And that is just use the discount code grams and pops, right? Yep. Is that grams, what we did? The word and spelled out and pops. Yep. All one word grams and pops. That'll give you. Can you, we I, spell it? Well, I'm not going to spell it. G R A M S A N D P O P S. You are correct. You move on to the next round. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in a spelling bee. So, yes, I think we're going to set it at 10% for yep. right now. But, it, you know, if you're going to buy something, use that. Save a little bit of money. And, again, thank you. We're not asking you to buy anything from the store. But if you do, hopefully the discount code will take a little yep. of the sting away. 
and we do appreciate the support a lot. We do. So. And I like chatting. If you do, if you are in our Patreon, I do like chatting with people and finding out the new things that they're selling or what they're currently working on. Yeah, if you're interested in joining the community and, and chatting in the Discord and stuff with the other members and with us, uh, we do have a link below. You can join it from there. It's what is four ninety nine a month mm -hmm. is what it's set to. I'm pretty sure it's four ninety nine a month Mine right now. Mine is free, so your grams is free. <laughs> she gets the pops discount. Yep. So, all right. Enough of that stuff. Let's get into the actual meat of it. But on the way there, let's grab a few more things that sold. Okay, I gotta make sure I grab the right one. Out of our latest storage unit, they had a whole bunch of Mac stuff, like Mac tools. So we sold yep. a Mac tools Flexi Fit tan and green hat. Yep. So that's it fitted. right there. They are fitted. They're large, extra large in size. We have Mac tools and Snap on tools and Matco tools. It seems like they were a mechanic or something. But the hats were in like brand new condition. They don't look like they've been worn hardly at all. So that one right there sold for how much? $12. Hey, do you know, do they have an extra, extra large? Probably. You need that? What? Because your head's so big? No. Yeah. This one would probably fit me. Don't I'm put not it gonna on. put it on. I don't want to leave hair in it. So. But yes, that sold for $12 plus shipping. $12 plus shipping. And we will be putting that in a box. Yep, so. with some little bit of one little pillow behind it. Yep. Oh, we can actually, yeah, the air not pillows. Not those pillows. We could just the make ones. the little air pillows now. We can. If you haven't seen that, go back and watch one of our previous videos. Yeah, we do have an air pillow machine that we are loving so far. So far, it's been, it's been amazing. We use that more than we probably should. <laughs> what do we have next? We do have, yeah, what do yep. we have next? We sold some jewelry. We sold a rose gold colored and clear rhinestone rose floral choker necklace. This thing just looks way too delicate for me to be touching. It's not. It is kind of a, yeah, rose gold and it has a little gemstone. It looks like diamonds in it, but they're not. And it has little roses on it. Yep. So that little necklace we got in a bulk lot. Mm -hmm. And that sold for how much? $13.99. Free ship. $13.99 for that. So easy. I like that. Let's talk best offers. Let's talk best offers. What do you want to say? I'm going to let you go first. You let me go first? Yeah. Oh, I have a lot to say about best offers. We don't agree on best offers. I don't, I don't like best offers. I will turn, well, I do too. I do like best offers because they do help you move stuff. But I mm -hmm. also think if you put on best offers, it's very rare that you're going to get a full sale price. Almost always, I mean, saying this is the price or best offer means I'm willing to take less. That's what it means to me. So if I'm buying something and you're showing best offer, I'm always going to make you an offer. I have on a couple things I bought on eBay, but I also, we have, we do have way more sales at regular price than we do at best offer. So to me, that's what that means. It just says, I'll take less, make me an offer. So I, I struggle with it. I do wish there was a function within eBay to allow you to turn on best offers after a period of time. I would yes. love to post all of our items without best offer and let them do the first 30 days. I do two weeks. Just on their own. And then after 30 days, turn on best offers. Yep. That would be ideal for me. I do think having them on helps get sales. It does. So the reason this came up is because, as I said in previous videos, my sister started selling on eBay. And so she has best offer on, on hers. And she did list them a little higher than most people. Just because of the best offer deal. But um, she didn't know what to do because she sent out like the bulk offer thing that you can send offers to yep. people. And somebody offered her something and she didn't like it because it was not what she wanted. So she countered and the person came back with the same dollar amount. So how do you handle best offer? Well, I, I think that question would then be, how do you handle lowball offers? Would that be a low ball offer or just not quite a good enough offer? I would say that's just not a good enough offer. I think I leave them. We set, we have our setup to decline any offers under a certain dollar amount for right. each one Which of our I'm, items. I'm not a huge fan of that. I don't like that piece. I, don't, I, I know you do like it and you do set it up. But when I'm doing those, I don't like to have that. There is an argument for it. I mean, if you put, I won't even entertain offers below this price. Mm-hmm then it gets rid of a lot of those low ball offers because you does. won't see them. It does, because it automatically declines it. Like I had yeah. one come in that they came in at a certain dollar amount, but when I went in and looked at the offer that I'd gotten down below, 
was where it said decline, and yeah. I don't remember ever getting that offer. So yeah, so it will auto decline a lot of the garbage offers that are just like you got a hundred dollar item and somebody offers ten bucks. It'll just take that out of there. You'll never receive it, and you don't have to deal with it. We did used to have a auto accept on them, but I took all of those off when yeah. we went on vacation because if it auto accepts while you're on vacation mode. Then you have to ship it in your You time. have to ship yeah. it within your normal time frame. So I don't have that set up, but I do have the other one set up. The way I do best offers is if somebody sends me an offer and it's not what I want, and I know I have a set price in my head that I want to sell it at, I will counter at that offer. And I've had a lot of people that come back at their same offer or like, very annoying, 50 cents more. I go back at my next, at my right. next price and they either accept it or they decline it. Yeah. So I think our policy is kind of just like an unwritten policy. We, mm -hmm. we entertain an offer no matter how low it is and we will counter offer once. After that, anything you send us that's not pretty dang close to what we're asking is just gonna get declined, period. Yep. We, don't, we don't keep going back with counters, we'll no. just decline. And they will get the point after that. But a lot of people getting these offers when you're first starting, they don't know how to handle the offers. Yep. And that's what her sister was asking about is, you know, what do I do with this? I'm getting these offers. They're not where I want them to be. Am I going to lose the sale? Yep. Like, Be okay with losing the sale if yep. it's not what the thing is valued at, unless you just really want to get rid of mm -hmm. it. I have done that. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I've, we've taken some low offers <laughs> we, if we just really want to get rid of it. Yeah, we've taken some low offers where we've lost money on it because I didn't realize I had free shipping when I accepted the offer. Yep. I'm just careful with the automation side of the offers because long term, when you get up to a store with 3,500 products yep. like this, it becomes an extra bit of management that I don't mm -hmm. care for. So it's better just to have best offers on and none of the other garbage and then if I'm changing things or running sales or anything like that, I don't have to worry about any automation piece that may have been set up before. All right, so that's it with best offers. There's not a lot to say there. I mean, it's pretty basic. Somebody's offering you money for something and it's either enough or it isn't. The only thing I would say is don't sell yourself short mm -hmm. unless it's something you just want to get rid of and you know the value of your item, stick to it. Yep. Yep. So, all right, let's look at what else sold. We sold some more Tupperware. We sold a Tupperware Rexel drug pastry mat, and it is actually from 1965. Yep. So it's got all the little circles on it for like rolling out pie doughs, mm -hmm. and it, it looks like a cutting mat, but it's not. It's for doing cakes and pastries. Well, cinnamon rolls and pies and dough mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So yep. I'll put a picture of it so you kind of see what it is, but I think we'll ship that. Into we'll probably cut down like a golf club box or something. Mm -hmm. We'll ship that. So it should ship pretty cheaply. That one sold for how much? $14.99. Okay, we sold some more Barbies, both of them. They're shipping together. The first one, which has the, the weird headband thing, is Halloween Fortune Barbie. Okay, so we She's a Target special. Halloween she, Fortune. Yeah, like she's dressed as a fortune teller for Halloween. Oh, like a little gypsy type. Yes. Okay. Yes. She sold for $16.99. Okay. And then the we next got one's this not one. so good. She's also another Glitter Beach Barbie. Oh, she's Glitter Beach Barbie, not Glitter mm. Beach Tree. I was going to say another. This one is not a Glitter Beach. No, we sold a Glitter Beach Barbie earlier. Oh. Like, you know, another one. Okay, but so. That's actually Barbie, but she only sold for $4.99. $4.99. And same buyer, so they ship together? Yep, I will bubble them together. All right, so $4.99. What did you say the other one was? $16.99. $16. So 20 Plus bucks. Plus ship. Easy peasy. Yep. All right, another topic that I guess having Hannah List, our youngest, we kind of ran into this. We're seeing somebody who's never been on the inside of eBay before mm -hmm. trying to list items. And one of the, the hurdles she ran into was item specifics. Yes. So we kind of showed her the way we list, which is a lot of times starts with copying a product, right? Yep, I do a lot of sell similar yeah. or whatever it is on eBay. Um, just because it's easier, it usually has a majority of the information. That's you what need. I do too when I list. But they also sometimes have way more information than you need. I think over time, people sell similar on products and then somebody sells similar off theirs and theirs. Mm -hmm. And over time, those item descriptions or those item specifics evolve. Mm -hmm. They grow. They keep adding crap. Yes. My big thing for that is I don't put anything in there unless it's something I know 
or something that needs to be put in there. Yep, and I, that's kind of the way I approach it too, is I'll go in the item specifics and I will try and strip out everything. Yep. And unless I look at it and I'm like, okay, I know that one for a fact. It's it's a Barbie brand, for example. Mm -hmm. I will leave the Barbie brand. If I know the year it is, I'll leave that. But I'll strip out everything that I can't say, okay, I can tell, like I know exactly what this is. If I'm in doubt at all, I just get rid of it. If it's extra and it doesn't need it, I get rid of it. I've had a lot lately when I've done Cell Similar that have had a lot of extra stuff in there. Like they yeah. fill everything in with NA or does not apply. And then they even add extra item oh, specifics. I, I delete every one of yeah, those. Yeah, they go in and add user item, user added item specifics and stuff. Like and some don't, of give them me, are don't get me wrong, when you're when you're adding item specifics, the more you have the better. Mm -hmm. Like in terms of being found in search engines and and everything else. I mean, the more item specifics you could fill in accurately, the better. But if you don't know those item specifics, it, if you're not 100% certain, then they, sh they shouldn't be there. Don't, don't guess and don't add in stuff that doesn't exist on the platform. Yeah. If, just... if it's not already uh, specific for that category, don't just add random stuff, at least in my opinion. No, I'm not saying it's... I don't just because when I look at like when we've shopped on eBay mm -hmm. and I go look at the item specifics, I'm looking for, you know, certain stuff like how tall is it? If that's something that you know and you put in there. The brand, the make, the model. Yes, but then you're scrolling through it and it says N-A, 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 N-A. And the, the item description thing is like this long. Yep. When it should be this long. Yeah, the item specifics, I think, get overthought a lot. And, and I think you're better off stripping it down to the basics. And, and that's kind of how I do it. I just scroll through. I get rid of anything that I can't 100% say is true. And I only fill in what I can say is 100% is true. Yep. And that's it. That, I mean, that's the basics of it. That's kind of what we told our youngest. Yep. And then from then on, she went through listing items she pretty did. quickly. She, she did. She listed like probably a dozen. 12 or 13. I think she got 12. Yep. And she did it in just an hour or so. And she did everything but the photograph. And the weighing of them. Yep. Which when I took the pictures, then I weighed them and, so, and added them. Yeah. So. From, from going to never seeing the inside of eBay to listing, I, I think maybe two hours tops. Mm -hmm. And it was it 12 items. Yeah. So, I mean, she did really, really well. But did some of those like item specifics, she got hung up on right away. It's like, what do I do here? It's a mess. Yep. That's what you do. Just delete the mess, start over, add only what you want. Yep. So, I think she had fun listing. I, well, she did. She said it was fun. So. So now we have another helper. We'll see if she thinks it's fun enough to do it again because she can list as much as she wants. <laughs> <laughs> she can. All right. So let's look at what's sold next. The next one was a good one. Oh, that's... You can't see it. Yeah, that's... I'm going to... Okay, so there's nothing to look at here because it's all balled up and it's a big crystal ball with a guy holding it up is what it is. So I'm going to put that down. It is a silver plated kneeling atlas atlas is a god right sure i don't know who he is i think he's a god not my god <laughs> and he has a crystal world globe and total yeah. height he is right under six inches tall with the globe and all so it's just a guy like squatted down holding a big crystal globe is what it looks like and i'll put a picture of it up here but we bought that for a buck one dollar we went to that garage sale and it was they had a whole bunch of like, because we bought some other stuff. We bought the Crystal Apple. We bought um, yep. a couple other some reason little... we were on Crystal Kick that day. We were picking yeah. up some paperweights and, and stuff. And snoring Santa. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we bought him for a buck and he sat for a while. Mm -hmm. He was here for a while. And we did take an offer on him. We had him listed higher than this. I did. But when that offer came in, this is another one. That, it was one of those where we were like... We're not going to get a lot of offers on this. Nope. We've had it for a while. I knew it was good and I've seen other ones sell, but it's just yep. a matter of finding the right buyer and for paying a buck and the space it takes up, I was okay with it being long tail. Yep. But this offer came in and it was a decent offer. It was below what we wanted, but we ended up taking how much for it? 70 bucks. I think we had it listed for 90. Yep. Yeah. So it wasn't a great offer, but it was more than enough of a return for us. Yes. $70 off of a $1 item. And we knew Any that the day. next offer would probably be a year away. Mm -hmm. That's the one and only yeah. time I think I've had somebody look at it. 
Yep. So yeah, I don't think we even had any watchers on it. Like it was just a dead mm, item I don't for remember. us. So yeah, that was a good buy. Seventy dollars. Well, it was a good shipping. sell. I don't know if it was a good buy. I would probably buy it again. It was small. It took a while to sell, but that was a great return. I bought a lot of those weird little things. Yeah, a lot of weird little like things. Like the the little statues, like the naked guy. Oh, you have bought and the one. other statue, like like Greek god type statues and, and stuff. And they sell. Yeah. yeah, we have sold. They quite just a bit don't of them. sell really fast, but they sell for decent money. They sit for a while. All right. Oh, these are mine, aren't they? These are yours. Well, they're not mine. They're ours. We bought them. I didn't list them. We have a whole. We got a box lot at an estate sale. That's got somebody's name on it. I know. <laughs> and it had a whole drawer full of these vintage pinback buttons. And there's all kinds of different topics in there. Oh, Some of them are doubles and triples. There's a Book It Club Sears one in there. Sears and SDSU, which is a local state college here. Yep. So it's just a ton of them. I think we listed it as having over 60. Yep. I think there's close to 80 in here because I threw in some doubles. But we listed this once as an auction starting at $15. Yep. We did get a bid and then they canceled. Yep, they bid. And as soon as the bid went through, then they canceled and said, I bought in error. All right. So the second time around when we listed these as an auction lot, we listed them again, starting at $15. And we just ran them for seven days as an auction. And we did get some bids. We got some that kind of fired off right at the last yeah, minute. We had somebody come in and snipe it. Yeah. And they sold for how much? $18.50. I like that one that's right there. $18.50. Which one? The little yellow one. <laughs> What's it say? Your smoking hurts my lungs. Nice. So, yeah, there are some cool ones in there. We'll get that shipped, but it's it's heavy. That's like a three-pound thing. Yep. All right, so the next topic we have is actually combined shipping. And this is something... This is something Teresa does more than I do. I haven't really done it because she does, she prints the labels mm -hmm. and that's kind of when it happens. We do, if we answer questions and people ask us, do you combine shipping? We do. We do, but we do it our way. Yep. We well, do. it's, I think it's a pretty common way, but. We do. So I have tried doing the whole invoice thing where people put the items in their cart and then request an invoice. It's never worked for me. I didn't even know that was an option. I just assumed they had to purchase and then you refunded the difference. Nope. So they can put them in their cart and then they choose to send you a request an invoice and then you can add the shipping amount and then they pay the invoice. But for me, that's a lot of extra work. That means you would have to actually go box them up, get an accurate measurement weight for the box. Yep before they ever buy the product. Correct. So you're boxing it up, you're doing all of that. And it's only with an invoice. You can send them the invoice and guess what? They can decide they can not choose to not to pay. Yeah. So you're doing all that work. So the way we do our combined shipping, and I explain it to everybody when well, they ask. Just on that topic, for the way with eBay making their new changes now, when someone makes an offer, even if you accept that offer, mm -hmm. they have, until they pay for that, the item stays listed on eBay. Yes, somebody correct. can come get it. Correct. So if you sent an invoice and they hadn't paid yet, could somebody else technically... Somebody, I think, could come yeah. in and snipe it. So I don't think I would want to do it that way anyway. No. That'd so, be just asking for trouble. Yeah. And I'm that piece makes me is a little weird. Like we've had it happen a couple of times where somebody made an offer and I accepted the offer. And then somebody bought and it then, full price. Yeah. Somebody the next day before they paid for it came in and paid full price. Nobody emailed it. about it. Yeah. I love so, it when that happens. But the way... Hey, we, if you're going to make an offer, pay. <laughs> yep. And I do like, there's a lot of them now that some people try and send the offer through the back way. Like they'll send you an e a message saying yeah. whatnot yep. so that they can get around having to add the auto, uh, auto pay when they do an offer. So the way we do combined shipping, and I explain it to everybody when they message me and say, hey, do you do combined shipping? I explain to them that the way we do it is pay for your stuff. However, either in one order or multiple orders, we will combine them. And then after we get the item packaged up, the label created. We just refund the difference. We refund the difference between yep. what they paid and what the shipping is. With, yeah, close to the difference. We, yes. we always hold back a little bit. And I recommend you do too because you are paying eBay fees on yep. your shipping. So yep. I would recommend holding back a little. We try and hold back a few bucks to cover basically the fees in the box and shipping yep. materials. But yep. we refund 
most of the difference. We do. We do. And I've, I've never had anybody complain about doing that. No. And if they choose that they, if they don't like the way we do it, then they just don't buy from us. So I'm yeah. okay with that. So that, and then when you do that in the back end, when you're getting ready to print labels mm -hmm. or, or buy your shipping labels, not print them, mm -hmm. it gives you the option to combine yep. like orders or the, well, orders going the same address. Only if you do bulk shipping. Right. We do bulk shipping labels, so we put them all in there and we do our labels yep. all at once. But up at the top on um, on your bulk shipping label screen, there's a thing. It'll tell you how many orders you can combine. Right. So like this like this one with our Barbies today, it will say, do you want to combine? And it should have a two behind it. Yep. Because you're combining two orders. And and that's, that's where we would combine them. We'd put in our new package yep. weight and it would give us the price that we're paying mm -hmm. and you could see on the left hand side the price they paid yep for the shipping and and just make a note of that and then once you've shipped everything go back and right. manually do the refund for the amount you said i don't do it right after but i do it the same day yep just because we're by the time we're done packaging we're ready to go to the post office it would be so. nice if they gave you a way to actually do it right there on that screen while you're doing that refund the customer x amount of shipping yeah it would make it easy that right now you kind of have to make a note and then go back and manually do it later yep. which isn't the smoothest process but that's how that's how we do it we've only had one complaint about that and i don't remember if she messaged about no. the combined shipping but we had somebody come in and buy a barbie and a doll shirt do you remember that one and oh. they message wanting to know how come we didn't combine shipping yeah but they had they had two separate addresses yep somehow when they ordered them they ordered them to ship to two different addresses yep and then they were angry that we didn't combine shipping but they actually caught their own mistake <laughs> i didn't even have to respond they no, commented they, they caught it <laughs> and then sent back messaging oh i'm sorry <laughs> yeah they were uh, i'm i'm sorry i didn't realize we sent to separate addresses yep. Yep. so i don't know how that happened on their end but it wasn't had nothing to do with combined yep. shipping there was no way we could have combined shipping even if we wanted to i am excited though on combined shipping because they are talking about doing combined shipping international. for international orders. That would be great. We have run so, into that before. That would be great if they do it. Yeah, the one the one that we did that wanted combined shipping on their product was some of those Care Bear things. And yeah. I ended up just creating a single draft just for them to come in and purchase it. Yeah, we so had to actually it, go in and create a new listing with yep. all the product they wanted. Yep. That was the only way we could get it combined for them. And some of those international shipping they pay is crazy. It is. So we, you have to, I mean, if you can help them out, help them out, but. We see them come through and it, 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 it confuses me when I see them come through, like the, the bark box toy yep. on our previous video. video was, it came through and they only paid like nine bucks for it, if I remember right. But it came through saying that they paid 20 some dollars. Yeah, and I'm like, shipping. there's no way shipping <laughs> is that high. But yeah, you see their And that their was only in Canada, shipping. I think. Yeah, it was. Yeah, we've had some international shippings that just get crazy. So yeah, if you're buying multiple products and you can combine shipping for them. Do we, it. We try to do it. Even sometimes if we have to take all those items and just take a quick picture on the desk of them and, and make yep. one new draft and just let them buy it that way. So they're buying a new item and delist the other ones yep so sometimes it's a pain but it's worth it if if you can help them out because they are getting they are getting hammered with shipping yep and there's so. a lot you know there's a lot that ships out of the u.s to other countries i wonder if there's a lot from other countries that ship into the u.s i'm sure there is all right i don't know <laughs> speaking of shipping we have a fun one to ship today you mean you have a fun one i to have ship? a fun one to ship today in our storage unit our very first storage unit we picked up there was this trophy. It is actually a horse statue trophy. It's metal and wood, and it's an American quarter horse. Yep, it's there, and it's signed by the artist. Like, we actually were going to throw this away. We were. It had a, a, a plaque. name plaque yep. on the front of it, but I very carefully peeled it off. Yeah, and it's it's heavy. It's like eight pounds, I think, is what we... Just under eight pounds. Did you call that a quest or a equestrian equestrian dumbbell sure <laughs> i think that's the right word i just can't say it so equestrian but yeah it, it is a horse statue and i don't know if you can see but there is like a signature it on is. it and i looked him up and he actually makes he, he makes these for these statues yeah. but he also does them he does his own horse statues and stuff yeah. so these are actually worth a little bit yes. of money and it's something we were going to toss in the garbage because it was just a big heavy 
And this is like a piece of marble too. I mean, yep. it's, it's it's built stout. well. So what did that actually sell for? $59. I had it listed for $59.99. Yep. I want to put it down because it's heavy. Our last thing. Corey still doesn't know what these are. Well, I do. I know what they're called now. I've never seen them before. They're actually called fidgets. Yes. And they he, come in all kinds of sizes. He is a Fidget Friends Newbies Trick or Treat Tico. And they do work. Oh, look. Yep, they do that. And then they have a button, I think, on the front of them or on top of their head. Yep, there's no, no batteries. batteries in it. Okay, so yeah, they have a, you see they got a speaker on the back. Yep. They make all kinds of noise. Like they're They're kind annoying. of like. Fidgety? No, I'm trying yeah, to think of they're what they're fidgety. like. Like so. noise wise. Furbies. Kind of, yeah. But those we- Looks like a cat, but- It is a cat. Is it? Yeah, look at him. Oh no. Oh, yeah, it he's looks kind of like a cat. He's a cat. Um, those we bought just by chance at a garage sale that we went to that had, we bought a whole lot of stuff that day yep. from that garage sale. And they've been really good sellers. Who's got a button on top and on the front. Yep. Okay, so what is the fidget selling for? $24.99. You want to know what I paid for them? Oh, not much. 25 cents for 25 all of cents. them. Some 50 cents for the bigger ones. I like it. And he's a little bit banged up, but not too bad, really. So He's a... The trick-or-treat ones and the holiday ones are, like, special ones, so they yeah. sell for more. Which is generally the case. Does that make you special? I'm not a Halloween one. I'm an October baby, but not a Halloween baby. I'm scary though, ain't I? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was talking about. <laughs> Jeez. All right. That's it. I think that's all we got. So again, to everybody that's bought anything from us or supported us or watched the channel, thank you very much. To our supporters who are in our Patreon and Discord, an extra big thank you. And to anybody that decides they do want to buy anything from our shop, be sure to use the grams and pops code yep. when you're doing it for an extra 10% off. And we will start putting that in the description of the videos. So if you forget what it is, just come back to one of our videos. It should be in the description from now on. Yep. And if you do happen to buy from us, let us know. Let us know. Yep. Put a comment in there. I like shouting you people out. We, we don't always get to, to put the viewer sales in the videos. Yep. Because we lot. only record once a week. Yeah, we record once a week. And we record a bunch of videos on that day. And, and it isn't always that we get... Some days we have to ship on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And we don't, we don't do videos on a lot of those days. So, mm -hmm. But do leave us a note. We would like to say thank you. And we will try to start keeping those. We'll have to ship the product out. But we'll try and save the thank yous for our Monday videos. Oh, I didn't think about that. We can do that. I didn't think about that. So, anywho, we're going to quit rambling. You're the only one rambling. I'm the only one rambling. I'm going to stop rambling. Yep. We'll catch you guys later. Hasta la vista, baby.